Praise the Lord. Father Lord, we thank you. We lift you up high above all situation and above all circumstances. We thank you for giving us the grace to come together today to learn at your bosom, to hear your words, to cherish your love that you have for us, and to be baptized by you and be blessed by you alone. That anytime we cry unto thee, the heaven will rise on our behalf, and God, Almighty God, will listen. We listen to the voice of his children in heaven, his most habitable place, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, greetings, everyone, and um, happy Sunday. Uh, I'm welcoming you to Kingdom of God Mandate Church. And then um, today, ministration is, good, is going to be um, around the birth of Jesus Christ, the um, the authent the authent authent authentication, authentication and the facts behind it. Um, many, why do we have to preach this? Because many young Christians are coming up, and then um, the leaders supposed to pass on this instruction to them how to believe and trust in the most high god the legacy that jesus christ has done over two thousand years ago we need to pass it on to our children children from generation to generation because why we serve god that is um, god of generation to generation there is no generation that is limited by him there's no power that is that can limit him there is no entity that can limit him in any form in any way it is the God in heaven that time and season does not limit his existence or his presence in our in our life. So he has the ultimate power and interest in the affairs of mankind. And it is paramount that we make our children to know God. It is paramount that we make them to know God better, even better than the way we were, we were made to know God. Praise the Lord. It is our responsibility. So what we want to share today is about the controversies that surrounds the, um, the birth of Jesus Christ. The controversies in a sense that is the school of thought. There are not one school of thought, but it is two school of thought. And out of that school of thought, there's even some other school of thought that are challenging whether or not this day is Christmas uh, is the original birthday or uh, or it is just um, days that were formulated and this. But we are not going into that. We just, I mean, we are not going to um, uh, follow the the school of thought that um, contending or contesting, but rather we want to follow the school of thought that's uh, rejoicing because we've said something in uh, 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 previously that uh, no one can dispute that Jesus Christ did not come to the surface of the planet, that the Messiah did not come to, no one has been able to prove that rather there has been many testimonies and many op opportunity, many uh, um, 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 scrolls that supported the Messiah on the surface of the planet. Um, contrary to the um, disbelief or unbelief or those that are challenging it that jesus christ did not come or it is not the it is not the messiah that's to come but there are so many supporting evidence to show that he is the messiah and he came onto the surface of the planet and there was a reason for him to come praise the lord and um, the reason for him to come we have to first of all look into that let us first of all look into the book of Revelation, chapter 12. Let us all go into the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation, chapter 12. Praise the Lord. Hello. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Revelation, um, Revelation 12, Revelation 12 from verse 1. And then a great wonder appeared in heaven. Mm -hmm. There was a woman who was clothed with mm -hmm. the sun, 
Yes. The moon was under her feet. Yes. She had a crown of twelve stars on her head. Yes. The woman was pregnant. She yes. She cried out with pain because she was about to give birth. Mm -hmm. Then another wonder appeared in heaven. Mm -hmm. There was a giant red dragon. Yes. Yeah. He, he had seven heads. Yes. He seven crowns. Yes. Each head. Yes. He also had ten fruits. Yes. The dragon's tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky mm -hmm. and threw them down to the earth. Mm -hmm. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was ready to give birth to her baby. Mm -hmm. He wanted to eat the woman's baby as soon as it was born. Mm -hmm. The woman gave birth to her son. Mm -hmm. he, will rule, he will rule all nations with an iron scepter. Mm -hmm. But her child was taken out to go back to his home. Mm -hmm. The woman ran away into the desert to a place God prepared for her. Mm -hmm. There she would be taken care of for 1,260 days. Amen. Then there was. Amen. Should I carry on? And carry on. Then there was a, a war in heaven. Yes, verse no. 7 now. Yeah? yeah. You're reading verse 7. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a war in heaven. Yes. Mark and his angels fought against his heaven. Okay. Dragon and his angels fought back. Yes. But the dragon mm -hmm. was not strong enough. Mm -hmm. He and his angels lost their place in heaven. Yes. He was thrown down out of heaven. Yes. The giant dragon was the old snake called the devil Satan. Mm -hmm. He leads the he leads the whole world the mm -hmm. whole world. Mm -hmm. So dragon with his angels was thrown down to earth. Yes. And then I heard a loud voice in heaven. Yes. The salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God. Yes. And the authority of his Christ have not come. Yes. They have come because the accuser of our brother mm -hmm. has been thrown out. He accused our brothers day and night before our God. Yes. And our brothers defeated him by the blood of the Lamb's death. Okay, when you stop at 12, yeah, and, and by the truth, they did mm -hmm. not love their lives so much, yes, we were afraid of that. Mm -hmm. So, we have the new heavens and all who live there, but it will be terrible for the earth and the sea because the devil has come down to you. Mm -hmm. He is filled with anger, he knows that he does not have much. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So then in the nutshell, the book of Revelation chapter uh, 12 from, from uh, verse 1 up to verse 12 um, uh, gave us a, a, a reason, one of the reasons that an intervention was needed. Praise the Lord. An intervention was needed. This described the situation in heaven even before the Garden of Eden, that is, before um, Adam and Eve, praise the Lord, before the Adam and Eve. Um, this also gave us an insight into the inhabitant of the earth, that is, the first earth um, that, was, that was before the destruction, um, before the uh, earth, was totally destroyed, the first destruction, not the second one. But the, this one was the battle in, in heaven and, and on earth that uh, destroyed and makes the heaven to be void that we read in the book of Genesis chapter chapter 1 from verse 1. Praise the Lord. So, um, from verse 1 to verse, to verse 4, describes uh, what happens in heaven. That is, a, 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 now a great sign appear in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under, the, on, under her foot, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. That describes the earth. Hello? That describes, that's a vivid description of earth. Then, being with a child, she carried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and then and ten hands and seven diadems on his, death, on his head. He still drew a third of the stars of, I mean, a third. He still drew a third of the stars of heaven 
So that means that you understand that that is Satan being described here. Because you remember, he was cast down with one third of the angels in heaven. Yeah? So, and threw, threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. This was like in a parable formulation what happened in the in the in the previous in the previous um era. So she brought a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. Then the woman fled to the wilderness where he has a place prepared by God. So there was a reason of contention. And then there, here comes the here comes the fight now. Satan true that is from verse seven. Um, um and war broke out in heaven. Angel Michael and 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 his angels fought with the dragon. That is Angel Michael's now uh, uh, given power by Almighty God, able to confront the dragon because under normal circumstances, the dragon that is, which is the Satan, more powerful than Angel Michael and other angels because he was in that place before. He was the archangel that the other Angel Michael and Angel Gabriel, Angel Euro, they took um, authority and a decision from after Satan would have gone into the inner caucus to get information from God and pass it on to him. So they dare not challenge it. But because of rebellion's power, so number one, rebellion attitude makes someone to reduce in strength and power. We need to learn from that. When someone is rebellious, it gives it, it makes the person to be exposed to the powers of darkness and all other powers below him can come above him. Rebellious causes that. You understand? So Michael and his angels were able to fight with this dragon and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. There was no more chance for anyone that betrayed you to still be beside you. If you allow anyone that betrays you to still be beside you, the person will wreck that place. The person will find another way to still come again, to come and hunt that person. So anyone that you have identified as your enemy, even heaven, come, you know, agree to it that you need to let, it's either the enemy goes away or you push that enemy to go away from you. Otherwise, it will make the situation worse because there are some unrepentant enemies. This Bible verse is making us to understand that there are some enemies that are unrepentant. So as a result of the unrepentance of Satan, uh, there was no any other reason for him to still stay in heaven. Hence, he was cast down. He was cast down. He was cast onto the earth. You understand? So I'll fast track to verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accusers of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night. So it, it means that it wasn't only now that Satan has been accusing the brethren before God. Then in heaven too, he was accusing them. Of course, he will, because he was the archangels in charge of all other um, all other affairs, all other angels. He goes into the to to the to the throne of God to, to present each or uh, to present each cases of everyone before God, either exposing them to punishment, either exposing them to chastisement or anything. He was in that position. So they were rejoicing in heaven that, oh, thank God that this person has been cast down. So Satan was cast down. You understand? Becoming, become, but he was Lucifer then. We're talking the era, this Bible verse is, I mean, uh, uh, describing to us the, the era with which Satan still bears the name of Lucifer then. So, 
For the accusers of our brethren, who accuse them before our God day and night, has been cast down, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimonies, and they did, and they did not love their lives to the death. They did not love their lives to the death. They did everything. Whether in death or in survival, they make sure that this Satan would not retain or remain in their midst. So you have to, with every iota of power inside of you, resist the devil. That is what that passage is telling us. You understand now? That is what that passage is, is advising them. That is, they did not love their, not that you are you are protecting, you are protecting your life. That's, oh, ah, I don't want, I don't want it. No, 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 no. They were not loving their life at all. They make sure that the enemy of their, of their advancement, the enemy of their breakthrough, the enemy that want to say that are standing in the midst of your testimonies, do everything in your power to cast that person away from your presence to the help of the Most High God. And you will now see where we need Jesus Christ on the surface of the planet. So therefore, verse 12 now, say, therefore, O heaven, and you who dwell in them, woe, on, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, that is, where he is being cast down to, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. The devil has a short time in your life. He has a short time. So that's why he's raging, 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 raging. But you've got Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was their power in heaven. Did you hear that in verse 10? They said, the power of his Christ have come in verse 10 of the book of Revelation. The power and the power of his Christ has come. And when the power of the Christ came upon the angels, the other angels, they conquered. So as they were able to conquer in heaven, it is paramount for our Lord Jesus Christ to come on the surface of the planet. He came literally to give us victory. And it is in that victory that you and I, we are being able to rejoice in his presence. We are able to call unto the unto the most high God and conquer that. In the name of Jesus, Satan, you are defeated. Then you can see that his hands start slippery. His hands start we getting off the grip that is is got on you, and that is one that is one of the purpose of, of. So I've explained the background of the, how paramount it is for our Lord Jesus Christ to come onto the surface of the planet and to come and save you and I. So we are going to look into um, the controversies of his birth and how it does come to earth. You remember the descriptions that we read in the book of Revelations of some of the creatures in heaven. If they have to come on the surface of the planet with, with that form, it will be it will be too scary. How many of you would want to come closer to, to Jesus Christ? He, he didn't take upon himself the form of a human being. Hello, let us reason now. Uh, let us think outside the box. If our Lord Jesus Christ, well, I mean, uh, many people have, have given Satan so many descriptions um, based on one fact or the other, either through revelations or either, either through dreams, or how Satan appears to them, how they see Satan in one way or the other. They gave the descriptions of, of it. They are not far off. If Jesus Christ had to come in that form to you, you have the perceptions of a Messiah that is, that is in our image. 
a Messiah that is in our image. But truly and truly, the image that we are talking in heaven is not the image that we are talking on earth. Where is your true image? How can you? You think that your body is your true image of God. No, sir. No, ma. It is not your, it is not your body that is the true image of God. It is your soul that is true image of God. If you are able to dig deep into your soul, you will know the form of you will know the form in which you are formed. And you will, from there, know the form of God in heaven. If Jesus Christ has to come in the form in heaven to earth, you won't be calling Jesus Christ right now. You won't be calling Messiah because you'll be so scared. You, you cannot, your heart cannot contain it. Your mindset cannot comprehend it and even accept it. And that is why, there is a reason for him to come in human form. But coming in human form, he did not see it as robbery. He conformed and comport and subdue his power and, 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 and make sure that he is in align with the rules and regulations of the earth. Praise the Lord. He made sure that he complied with the rules and regulation of the earth, such that we may learn from him and he would how to teach us to conquer because that is the way he taught them in heaven to conquer in the book of Revelation chapter 12 from verse 10. He, his Christ came unto them and gave the angel Michael and the other disciples power to conquer Lucifer because they were only, they, there is no one of them that could face Lucifer. The, the power that God bestowed upon Lucifer that time. No any other power can come after, after Lucifer. It is only the Christ. It is only Christ that can give them that power to be able to face him. God himself will not face Lucifer. Why? He created him. It is not in the habit of God to destroy whatever he creates. He loves us to that extent. He not that he loves human beings alone. He loves the, his creation. Whatever he created, he loves it so much that he doesn't like to destroy it. Contrary to the belief of many people that says that they want him to, they, uh, why is he killing everybody or why is he destroying things? No. Heaven and earth will pass away. It is still the same place. It is still the same there, but they, they, they will fade away. Your atmosphere, I've been saying this to many people all over the world, wherever you are, go into the history, go into the archive, check where, check the check the area in the year 18 something. And in fact, 18 something is far away. You understand? Let us let us just look in the in the early 19th century, the early 19th century, and compare it to the present time of early 20th century. In fact, to compare the tw early 20th centuries, we are now in 2023, and compare it to what you are, go into the archive of your local area and check what has changed. You will realize that everything are just fading away gradually. And as they are fading away, new things are coming in. That is the design, that is the way God designed the world. Are you getting it now? And also, this is also another school of thought that, that challenged the, 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 the prophecy, or I wouldn't say prophecy, that the thinking that God is going to destroy the world. No, he is renewing it. It fades away and a new one coming. It's like a cycle. Coming, fading away and coming back. Fading away and coming back. From that time, that the, the the Bible did not in, in uh, the Bible did not say that the earth was eradicated completely. It was void. It was there, but void. You understand? Without life, but it wasn't gone. It was there, and at some point, that era also faded away, and the light was there. God commanded light, and the light came, and darkness cannot comprehend. It since since that time and everything coming and passing by and coming so don't let us don't let us digress so uh, that was that that was that was another preaching which um, was for a, a long time ago that I preached but where we want to 
what, what I'm trying to prepare here is the mindset of many people. That there are so many theories over there talking about uh, Jesus Christ coming onto this onto the it is 25th of December. But I've told you why he had to come is to give us power and strength to forgive us to give us the the powerful atonement according to the book of Exodus Leviticus Numbers Deuteronomy up to um, uh, Malachi, they were engaging in animal atonement, that is killing of animal for the atonement of sins. Because mankind introduced sins through Adam and Eve, and from sins being introduced onto the earth in that form, there should be atonement of sin because they love us. And something I want to tell us that you have never heard before. Listen attentively. It was not only Adam and Eve was the first one that brought sins onto the earth. The moment Lucifer, Satan, was casted onto the earth, sin already established on earth. Earth has been designated as a sinful place from heaven. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There, there has never been anyone that said that to you. It's never it is not even it is not Adam and Eve that introduced sin onto earth. Satan introduced sins onto the earth. And Satan was cast down before Adam and Eve. Hence, it can't be that it is Adam and Eve that brought sin onto the earth. It is Lucifer, who is devil and named Satan, that brought sin onto the earth. And the earth was abandoned by heaven to do all atrocity. But God wants his glory to shine on earth. And he now introduced mankind. But in the in the in the in the cycle of mankind, it is. It, I mean, it was Adam and Eve that introduces sin into that ma macro environment. If you, if I can describe it that way, or into the into into, I won't say into. Can I say into the cosmos of mankind? You understand. So there are so many theology and the explanation on the, the introduction of, of sins uh, onto the earth and all that. So I'm only trying to prepare you um, why Jesus Christ um, has to come for to rescue us. And it is true that we are through his blessings, through his sacrifice that we are still standing today. Otherwise, Satan would have been able to overpower mankind in all forms and in all ways. He did that throughout, up to Malachi, until Jesus Christ came. In fact, um, in the book of from the from the from the resurrection of Jesus Christ, mankind are delivered from the grip of Satan because Satan was claiming. Um, um, was claiming authority over the life of mankind, ruling them, making them to go against God constantly. And God was telling them that for you to come closer to me, you have to make animal sacrifice, you have to shed the blood, and that is why the, the, the animal shedding of blood for the atonement of sins was so rampant and so common in the Old Testament up to the time Jesus Christ came and make that once and for all sacrifice on the cross of Calvary that you and I can now say in the name of Jesus and we can plead the blood of Jesus upon our soul, spirit and body as you are even if you are a genuine Christian full of I mean, walking in the path of righteousness. Whenever you call upon the, the weapons that Jesus Christ gave to us, you will see the calmness. It is, a, it is undescribable within your soul, spirit, and body. 
And wherever you put the name of God, wherever you step into the atmosphere where the name of God is being erected or is being established and God sanctify his name and put his name there, if God, if you call upon God and he, he answered you and put his name on that sanctuary or in the sanctuary where you will see the calmness, no matter where you are coming from, no matter the problem you are bringing, no matter the havoc and the problems that is chasing you, when you get into that sanctuary, they will bow. That power of darkness will bow. It has been something phenomenal that has been happening in the life of many Christians. So, as, as a disciple of Christ, it is important for us to rejoice during Christmas time. It is not the day that he was, he was born that matters, but the joy we want, to, we want to celebrate, just as you are celebrating your birthday, that is all about Christmas. Don't let anybody... Um, convince or confuse you about oh they are it was the day of the idol worshippers or it was the it was the period that one idol is being worshipped or this and that and no 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 don't go into that school of thought at all don't accept that in your soul spirit and body focus on the on our our Lord Jesus Christ the author and the finisher of our faith and he will help you to conquer all your battles in all forms. Praise the Lord. Christ has to be born because of the sins of mankind. For the disobedience of one man, sin enter the world that is, or in the man realm. In the man realm, not in the spiritual realm. This time around, in the man realm, it was, but it was not the first sin on the surface of the planet. In the mankind realm, it was it was in that period that sin was introduced by Adam and Eve. You remember what happened in the book of Genesis where they were asked not to eat the apple and they ate the apple, and and there was a detachment between mankind and 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 God. Jesus Christ came to amend that. He brought us back with His love. He reconciled us. And to pay for the sins that we committed, that our forefather committed, the one that we are about to commit, he was standing and still standing in the gap for us. That God Almighty will not be angry with us anymore. If you want to know the anger of God, I've done the preaching. I don't know whether many people listen to it or not, but it's on YouTube there. And you can double check it yourself in the Old Testament, how God dealt with them. In the Old Testament, it is instant. I mean, it was instant judgment. You and I know that if you're a Christian in the Old Testament, it was an instant judgment. If God did not spare Moses, he didn't spare Aaron. He didn't spare, he didn't spare Aaron's son, his two sons. He didn't spare them. And they were working for him. How, how much more you? And I. So we need to we need to rejoice for the greater gift that our almighty God has given to you and I. That when you call upon the special blood of Jesus for the atonement of your sin, God overrides all. all. He, said, he said, I will not look upon the sins of your, of your youth. Ah, that is greater love. Don't you understand that? Okay, let us just when you owe you owe now your mortgage. Let's just say you owe mortgage, and all of a sudden the bank comes and says that I will not look out from today. You know, you are mortgage free. I will not look again. And you still have so many, so many years to come to to to, to um offset that. So many years and so much money. You have been struggling to make sure that every month you are paying your mortgage, your mortgage, you're paying your mortgage, you're paying your mortgage. Your mortgage your you can't just see that. Life is just like a drag. Ah, this mortgage. Do I even need to? You are con you are thinking, do I even need to continue? Oh, this and that. Do I need to inform myself? And all of a sudden, the bank manager just knocked your door and just said, tip, 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 tip. Um, 
Now we want to override all your mortgage. Look at that joy. Can you imagine the joy that will fill your heart that time? That is, that is, that is even uncomparable to the joy that you should have in your heart this Christmas period, this festive period, for the one that takes away all your sins that came onto the earth to come and save you. And now he saved them in heaven. You understand? He saved them in heaven according to the book of Revelation chapter, from chapter 12, verse 10, where we read. You understand me now? He gave them power. The power of Christ. The, 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 he said, then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. The power of the Christ have come. To do what? For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. Your accusers will be cast down in the pit. He was cast down from heaven to earth, from earth into the pit. Your authority is to cast him down and let him remain inside the pit. Beneath, beneath the ground. That is where he belongs. And that is where they want to. For that to happen, Jesus Christ had to come. Are you getting it now? Jesus Christ had to come. Um, maybe to clarify this, let us all open our Bible to the book of Genesis quickly. Genesis chapter 1. Let us open our Bible to Genesis chapter 1. Someone to open their Bible to Matthew chapter 1 verse 20, 21 for us. And so on to open the Bible to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Are we all there? Genesis chapter 3. I will read verse 1. Now the serpent was more honey than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, As God intended, said, As God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Question mark. Verse 2. And the woman said to the serpent, you know the serpent is the, is the devil, Satan, has been referred to. We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. You understand? But, verse 3 now, but of the fruit of the tree, which, the, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it lest you die. You understand? So the wages of sin is what? Is death. It's clearly written here. If they commit that thing, the consequence of it or the uh, uh, the wages of it is death. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. That was a lie. Because God said they will die, the serpent coming. But this is what he has been doing in heaven that we read in the book of Revelation chapter 12. You understand? Accusing them, manipulating them, destroying their love for God, damaging their love for God. And we still see that on the surface of the planet now. And many are, many are disputing the Christmas they are challenging the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. So verse, uh, let us quickly read Matthew 1, 21. Matthew 1, 21. Who is there? Read out for us. Matthew 1, 21. Praise the Lord. Yes? Matthew 1, 21. Yes, please, quickly. And she will bring forth a son. And she will bring forth a son. And you shall call his name Jesus. And you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people. For he will save his people. Those that from are their, called by their, by his name. He will save them. From what? From their sins. From their sins. He will save his people. His people that are known by his name. He will save them from their sins. Is one of the reasons that he need he, he had to come. I've been, this is just like a summary of what I've preached from January to now. You understand? His people, those that are called by his name. And Jesus had to be born because God wanted to reveal his own character. You understand? 
reveal his own his own self, the humanity. You understand? He wants to reveal the character of humanity inside of him to to the man to mankind that Jesus Christ will be a template of God in heaven. How God wants us. How God. How God want us to, to conduct or comport ourselves. Jesus Christ is the epitome and the emblem which we, we can emulate of heavenliness. You understand? He embodied in God is the character, love. That is, he came to show us love. Jesus Christ came to show us the true love and God demonstrated this character to man by giving his only begotten son. God only come to show, to showcase his character on the surface of the planet. Praise the Lord. To showcase his self. Praise the Lord. To showcase, um, to showcase, to showcase the, his character in heaven unto mankind. Such that you and I, we will believe in him and we will set, we will be set free from the chains and shackles, from the confusion, from the deceitfulness that is full in the, in the world. That Satan has given many people reason to doubt God. He gave them reason to doubt God in heaven. Yes, he gave them God. I mean, he gave them the thoughts, the mindset in heaven as well. He was conspiring with the one told of the angels. that why does it have to be instruction coming out from you alone? I can as well do everything. Anyway, I'm the one doing everything that, that, uh, that ought to be done, forgetting that he was taking instruction. And with the instruction of God, there is power that accomplishes it. When God sends you something to do, he has given you with his word, he has given you that power to accomplish it from the day one. Any rema thing that God lay in your heart in, in, the, in, the, in the process or in the way of advancement in life, in your lifetime, anything that you go, it is from God, the power and the authority to accomplish is already, is already um, packaged with that rema word. Example of it was when Apostle Paul had an encounter. Being an evil person, ch chasing after the Christians, killing them, persecuting them. But when he met with Christ one-on-one, -on -one, the power to accomplish was given unto him. He was able to do more than the other apostles that Jesus Christ actually even stayed with. It was because of the word, the Rema word that came into him. Simon, Simon, why are you? Persecuting me. You understand? Or oh, it, it was Saul. His name it, it, it was named Saul before it was it was named Paul. You understand? So why are you persecuting me? Okay, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. Go now. And when the lightning bl blinded him. But by the time he was now launched out, the power that was within, nobody could dispute him. He received unction power. So the same way, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the power that will come into you will be extraordinary. And you will be phenomenal in the world. Why are you... How are you going to be phenomenal? Because you are a new person. Satan will be mindful not to touch you. The power of darkness, they will even envy you. They will, all the challenges that you are seeing, oh, it's because you have drawn a line. The moment you take our Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've drawn a battle line between Satan and heaven. So the, 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 the fight that they were describing to us in the book of Revelation chapter 12, oh, they brought it down to earth as well. And that battle continues on the surface of the, of the planet. And who are the angels? Michael of the earth and angels of the earth. It is you, the Christian, that he now have the uh, 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 opportunity to wage the war with that. Those are the challenges that you are seeing. So rejoice. 
that you have a Messiah who will not leave you alone in your battle. He will fight your battle and fight your war. He will win your battle and he will win your war. He won for them in heaven. He will win for you on earth. That you will not go down with, with him into the, into the pit. Rather, Jesus Christ on that day, according to the book of First Thessalonians, that you, he will come for you on that day and take you home to the kingdom that he said he wants to prepare, he has gone to prepare for you and I. Praise the Lord. Are you excited? I am so excited when I'm when when I'm preaching about our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ had to had to be born to remove the sins of woman through a perfect sacrifice. It is important we understand that God was never interested in all these animals' atonement of, of, of sins because we commit sins as a result of deceitfulness of Satan. Satan wants us to, to, to commit sin. Anything that we are doing, you think you are just doing it on your own. No. It's Satan that wants you to grieve God in one way or the other because he knows that the promises of God outweigh his own promises. And he is envying all the promises of God. Oh, why God is so mindful of these people that he bestowed upon them all these promises and all these blessings. He is jealous. He was jealous in heaven. He is jealous on earth where he's been cast down here. He's jealous of you and I. Because greater is he that is inside of you than he that is in the world. Those ones that are of Satan, you are, you are more than them. You are, you are powerful than them. Only that you do not realize that. So it is not about animal sacrifice at all. If you are still going after a pastor that tells you to bring money to go and buy uh, all these, uh, buy uh, intestines, buy these, buy drum, buy the microphone, buy this. You can buy those ones to uplift the sanctuary. But if they not start telling you that your salvation is is attached to the to the drum you are buying or to the mics you are buying or to looking or to be looking after the church that, that your salvation is uh, is attached to that that's a lie god does not believe in all that sacrifice anymore the mm -hmm. only sacrifice he look up onto is the sacrifice that jesus christ made on the cross of calvary hence otherwise we we should have still be killing goats, ram, bulls. Go into the book of Old Testament, most especially the 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 lay down plan of atonement of sins in the book of in the book of um, um, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. Go into it and read it, and you will see that it wasn't easy at all when Jesus Christ came to make everything to be splendid be, be, between. I mean, for you and I. Let us read a, a little bit about that one in the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 25. Let us read a little bit. Just for us, just, just for us to know um, the importance of our Lord Jesus Christ on the surface of the planet. And if I'm not able to finish this today, I will continue. Don't worry. You will get you will get the you will get the facts. You understand? You will get your whole fact. Um, so Exodus 25 from verse 8. Um, verse 8 tells us that, and let them make a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Let them make a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I show you, that is, the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishing, just so you shall make it. You understand? Just so you shall make it so they make the tabernacle and then and they make the sanctuary so that God can dwell among them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And he committed them to give willingly, not with grudginess. Any sacrifice that you are going to give. And then and then he gave them all the necessary. If you read chapter 25 uh, of book of Exodus from verse 1, you will you will get all the all the different sacrifices and how the temple are to be built and uh, what they needed to do on the on the on the on the on the um on the tabernacle. Praise the Lord. So when you now go on to 
when you now go on to Exodus 40, when you go on to like Exodus 40, praise the Lord, Exodus chapter 40, when you go up on to Exodus chapter 40, then you will see, praise the Lord, from verse 30, 34 and 35. Say, then, the, then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Before this, they will have killed thousands of animals. Before the, before the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting, that is welcoming the presence of God, because the, the, God cannot stand in, in a, a sinful way or contaminated places they will have killed a lot of animals for atonement of sin. The, even the priest will have to kill animal as well to watch himself clean of any sin. But eventually, when the glory of God comes down to their knees, that they will not just die. Because if God comes and found sins among them, they are dead. Instant judgment. You understand? So God is not interested in that anymore. And he had to let our Lord Jesus Christ come. Praise the Lord. He will, he will allow Jesus Christ to come to atone for the sins of, of you and I, such that we will not be a prey to the power of darkness anymore. Anyone still trying to, uh, trying to put you in that kind of slavery of bringing, 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 tell them that Jesus Christ has paid for all my sins. Praise the Lord. Be proud to say that. Be proud to say that. You understand me now? Be proud to say that. Because it's fact. Um, um, Hebrew 10 verse 4 says that. For it is not possible that the blood of the bulls and goat could take away sins anymore. It is not for it is not possible that the blood of the bulls and goat could take away sins anymore. Hence, Jesus Christ needs to come. God was not. What, why? What, so many people didn't think deep on that statement. The statement means that even the bulls and the goats and everything that they were using, they were not as described as it was stated by God to be, to be, to be used for the atonement of sin. How many, how many um, uh, spotless first year animals? Will they be able to get? Let us think about that. So this time manipulating. So it was not even righteous anymore. The, their sacrifice were not even clean anymore. They were blemished ones that they were sacrificing and God was rejecting their offering. So anyone that asks you to go and bring something, make sure that it is the one that it is without blemish. So this kept on giving the one, the animals that were with blemish, with spots and everything, which were not acceptable by God, that is what they were engaging themselves. Because they could not find them anymore. They killed all of them. That's how difficult it was for them to atone for their sin. And it was one of the reasons Jesus Christ had to come and die for you and I without blemish, surrender himself, led to the slaughter's house like, like, a, like, a, a, like a lamb. And it was said in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, book of, of John as well, the lamb of God. Behold the lamb of God that will come and take away all the sins of the world. Praise the Lord. So we need to rejoice when the Christmas time comes, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, it's not that the period that we are celebrating it that matters, but that he came. Just as he showed up for them in heaven, as we read in the book of Revelation chapter 12, he showed up for us as well on earth. Let us rejoice for that. Let us be happy in that, in that, in, in that uh, 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 awesome mood. Jesus had to be born to make his spirit available to all mankind as well. The spirit of God to be available because it was the spirit of the Satan that fills the earth 
you will see some people, the kind of spirit inside of them, even you yourself, you can't stand there. You can't stand beside them. Honestly speaking, when you see someone that is full of the power of darkness, I'm telling you, if the spirit of God is inside of you, it will be very, very uncomfortable for you to be in that presence. Likewise, the same way. Wherever you are standing, where the spirit of God is around you, when any power of darkness steps into that atmosphere, they will be very, very uncomfortable. Honestly speaking, I've seen that phenomenon before. I've been in a place that someone just said that, please, let me go. Leave me and let me go. I can't stay in this place with this person. I have to open this door. He told them. I remember then I was working. I was working in a, um, I was working in a, uh, where, where is it called now? Um, um, the, the, I was working in a semi-intensive care. And this senior, and this senior nurse came. And then immediately he set, I mean, immediately she set eyes on me like this. It was how I, I was not, I was not a registered nurse then. I was never been. I was, I was working as a junior nurse. And all the main, the, the superior, the supervisor, and all of them, they were on holiday. And then they have to call this lady a locum to come and head the, to come and head. Uh, the department for that period and when this lady came I had so many stories I, I had so many so I have so many phenomena there that I could share with you but they are very very interesting she came the moment she saw me that is my place of work she only came and the moment she saw me she said ah she was first of all managing it got to a stage she couldn't stand it anymore. She said, no, I have to go. She called everybody. They said, no, she cannot leave. She, she, she was screaming. It got to a stage that we thought maybe she was even more mad than the resident that was there. Honestly, when we saw the agony in her, in her, in what consumed her, we had to let her out immediately. And it was, if it was not that she was a professional, he will lock her up in that psychiatric home that, that, that time. That was before I became a pharmacist. So that is what I'm telling you, that when you, when you have the, the spirit of God inside of you, the power of darkness will find it difficult to, to be comfortable around you. So wherever I am, when someone is not comfortable around me, I know that that person has got something, something going on inside of them. I know that the spirit that is inside of them is not, is not genuine. I know that there is a darkness hidden inside of them. They might not even know, but they, because you carry this, the spirit of God, they will not feel comfortable. It will be very, very difficult for them to but if they carry genuine spirit, oh, you will be playing like babies. You will just be chatting and playing like babies. You understand me now? So that is the spirit that, that Jesus Christ brought to us. Praise the Lord. I'm looking at my time. I wish I could just go on and on. Praise the Lord. It is amazing. Jesus Christ came for you and I to rescue us, to make available that spirit to mankind. As the moment Adam to be God in the Garden of Eden, there was a separation of intimacy of relationship. You understand? Sin separates us from God. That is one thing that you, the meaning of, of presence of Jesus Christ uh, on surface of the planet also teaching us that sins separate us from, from God and the only thing that can link us back is Lord Jesus Christ, the love of Christ. That is the only one that can lead us back together. So um, stay tuned for the next step, for the next uh, um, 
episode of this, the part two of this. There I will, I, I will, I will, I will pinpoint and tell you the era <laughs> and the period with which Jesus Christ was actually born. And it is through the guidance of the Bible that we are going to, this one, you will be able to say it to others as well. To, to, to be in a nutshell, Jesus Christ was born around, according to the calendar of the Jews, he was born around September. You understand me now? Around, around September. But this is the period that he, he, he was chosen to be celebrated. And it is the celebration aspect that we need to concentrate on, not the time, the date, and the something that he was born. And then we will show, we, in the second part, we will be able to establish and we will dissect it ourselves. According to the Bible, there are so many Bible verses that, that we can use. It, it's just that we don't, we don't look into the, we don't look into the Bible very well, but everything, every answers are in there for you and I to know the truth and the truth shall set us free in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.